My son left on a Friday night. I thought he was going to play video games with his friends. And he came home in a box. I'm Lisa Cook. I'm Andrew Gaston's mother. My son was killed January 25th from a weed robbery gone bad with another 17-year-old kid. I left his room um, the exact way it was the night he left. These were the pants he was wearing and he changed. I left them on his bed. He played up at Daniels Park all the time. Basketball was his life. I had this made from a picture of him um, in celebration of life. He was, as you can see, tall. And he was a basketball junkie for sure. My last words to him were stay safe. He told me he was coming home. He did. He did. We a lot of the violence that's going on, I say, in these separate groups we have in Cedar Rapids now with a lot of the boys. We all grew up with each other. We all used to be friends. We used to be close. But the older we got, the more our mindsets changed and the more we looked at each other different. You know, you grow up and you start to see, you know, little stuff like I used to date that girl and I could talk to her. A lot of little arguments and then kids started to get their hands on guns. I believe the generation before, or my generation, everything wasn't instant. Whereas now I think something will happen and then all of a sudden there's a video on social media of a kid getting punked or bullied or beat up and now you have to retaliate because you're trying to impress your friends. My name is Ethel Brown. I am one of two mothers who lost their son um, to gun violence at the Iowa Smoke Shop out in Kirkwood um, in May of 2019. Royal was very artistic, he loved music. He wasn't one of those kids that was completely stuck in the music from the 20th century. He loved art, had just started developing a love for photography. Royal took clothes to school for a kid that he noticed was wearing the same clothes every day and they were getting dingy. And Royal didn't want him to be bullied because he didn't have as much. So Royal took backpacks full of clothes to school for this boy. He truly went out into the world, even at a young age, and instilled values and respected others the way that I taught him to. There are still good people in our world that are willing to stick up for people that they don't know. And that's pretty much the only reason Royal was at that party that night. Kayla wanted to go, and she asked Royal if he would go with her. And he said, Mom, I don't really want to go. And I said, I know, baby, but what are you supposed to do when your friends ask you to do something? He said, I'm supposed to step up and be a man and do what I'm supposed to do. And I said, so what does that mean? And he said, even though I don't want to go, I'm supposed to go to make sure that Kayla is safe. So he went. When Royal died, Andrew and I, we actually debated in there and I told him he has got to stay out of bullshit because I cannot bury him. My friend buried her only child. And then this happened. I never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. We got our hands up, put the guns down. Cause I'm so tired of losing all my friends now. Got our hands up, put the guns down. Cause I'm so sick and tired of losing my friends now. The chances of us making it out is real fucking low. How am I supposed to have a dream to, to lay my hair somewhere safe? And I'm 15 and live by myself. Ain't no mommy and daddy coming to give us money. Ain't no auntie, grandma, uncle. And it's like, you can't even go around your family being out here because you know the risks of that. I don't want to bring no bad mojo to my family house. I don't want to go over there and I know that this motherfucker's out here lurking for me. That's, I'm not doing that. 
I'm gonna think with my head. So even though I want to go somewhere safe, I know that them safe places isn't somewhere that I should be at because I'm causing danger to other people. Listening to the community's response to the violence is that they perceive the youth as others. They're youth and families that have been traumatized, right? To, to get to a point where you're carrying a gun and it's okay to shoot and it's normal to be shot at means that a lot of things have happened in your lifetime. So my daughter, Denisha, went out with some friends. She's like, Mom, I'm gonna be right back. I'm just gonna step out for a minute, you know, and go hang for a second. I'll be right back, like within an hour. And unfortunately, within that hour, she was shot and paralyzed by a stray bullet. I've had to almost lose friends over this situation that I've had for my whole life because my child survived. Even though Denisha got shot, her, her life was taken away from her as well because she can't go do all the things that she wanted to go do, which she was going to be in the Army, but that killed that whole thing. This is Sierra, Denisha's god sister, who while we were in the hospital helping Denisha recover, she was in a double homicide and got shot by a stray bullet and killed along with another gentleman. So that was my daughter's first experience riding in a wheelchair outside of the hospital was to go to her sister's funeral. And just when she's, we got her just right, she's living good in Arizona, life is good, my godson Royal gets shot and killed. And all hell breaks loose. Um, Ethel is like one of my best friends from childhood. So we're like more like sisters and we say sisters versus anything because we've known each other for so long. We kind of all have an alliance now together. All of us have sons that are gone. Reset 2021 goal is to keep very high risk youth safe, alive, and out of prison. After you black out or have a situation, you sit there and you're like, what was I thinking? Oh my God, why did you let me do that? What, whoa, what put me up to that? When you pick up a gun, you don't get that opportunity after you do something to say that. When you are saying, what did I do? You're behind bars forever for life and you won't get that chance to redeem yourself or to fix what you did. I never knew my dad. He, he was always in prison. I had a friend who was a lot older, Anthony, he would help us do music. For me, it was a place to go to stay off the streets. Like I vividly remember getting out of school at McKinley and me and a group of friends would walk to the studio and our other group of friends would walk right down 15th to go hang out with some cats that were 18, 19, 20 years old and, and, and sell drugs, post up on the block. Reset 2020 is just about filling that gap in the community where no one else is doing this, this work. The police can't figure out how to build those relationships and, and keep our community safe. So it's us, it's us as community members who live here and care that have to do that work. Majority of our kids that we have come up here, they single, they come from, a, you know, just a mother. They don't have a father in their life, so we've been that role model for them. We got kids like us who that really need somebody that, that would love, I would love to have a loving family who loved me and supported me the way that I needed to be to succeed. These kids now have someone to look up to before they do something stupid. They're thinking about the conversation that they're going to have with me or other people that they have on the reset task force that they don't want to let us down. And I don't care if it's three or four o'clock in the morning, it's ever in a situation, whether you feel like you're going to do some harm to somebody or whether somebody feel like they're going to do some harm to you, call me, I want to come and get you. Love is an action word, so that's something you got to, you got to go out there and show them. You can say all day, uh, we do this because we love you, but we got, we, sh we got to show them that we love them. I don't know why these kids carry these guns. I don't think they realize what guns do to people, what they do to families. My son is never coming home. They don't get the impact of what they've done. A young man 
is now going to be sitting in jail. And keep in mind, a young man who is a single father with a four-year-old child of his own. I don't harbor any hatred or resentment towards Andre. I feel sorry for him. It saddens me and it makes me very sad that he did not think of his own child first before pulling that trigger. If you fight with your hands, you get to live another day. You get to think about it. You get to, you get to come out of it and learn from your mistake. If you shoot and kill someone, there's no learning. You're going to prison and it's just done and over with and there's no say so. And there's two lives that are lost. So nobody wins when you pick up a gun and shoot. Hello, my name is Stacy Walker and I serve as a Lane County Supervisor representing many of you. And what we're seeing right now in our community is that a lot of young folks, people who look like me, are dying in the streets through senseless gun violence. That's not a fate that many of you want for yourselves. So I'm asking you to do everything you can from here on out to make good choices so that you can give yourself a chance to live. Thank you. If we could change one life for being here, then we did our job. And that's what we're here for. time.